Hey guys, welcome back to the Kinwoven Home. My name is Shara and Happy New Year! This is the first video of the new year and it feels really good. And as you've read on the title, we are starting the year off with some really great organizing content. Mostly because my house is disheveled and really needs to be organized, so you guys are gonna do it with me. And I have a feeling, I have a hunch, that maybe you're in the same spot as I am. So I'm gonna encourage you in this new series as we go into some different areas of my home that you guys kind of watch these videos, get up and actually take these tips and apply them to the spaces in your home as well. Because truly this whole process like clears your mind. It's very therapeutic. You get out with the new, wait, out with the old and with the new and you kind of clean things up and have like a cleared mindset for the new year. And I think it's gonna really help you guys. So the first thing we're gonna do is the kitchen, but we're gonna kick it off getting into the pantry and cleaning it out. And so my question of the video for you guys today is, when was the last time that you cleaned out your pantry? And if you did it recently, what was the oldest item that you found? I remember I did this in my mom's house once and I think she had something from like 2012. And this was like a year or two ago. It was like a box of macaroni. I'm like, why is this still in here? Anyway, you never know. You can find some really good gems in there. That's half the fun. So if you're ready to get into today's video, thumbs up this video. And if you haven't subscribed, join this little family that we have here on YouTube. We make so many different fun videos every single month and we just have a really good time. So hit the subscribe button and let's get started. Okay, so we're gonna talk about three main categories in your kitchen. The first is gonna be the pantry, then we're gonna talk about the fridge, and then we're gonna talk about some hard to organize areas that end up becoming just like total messes like your pots and pans or how to organize lids of you know plastic Tupperware containers or whatever. Okay, so first things first, taking it all out. So starting with the pantry, I actually cleaned out my pantry yesterday because I wanted to get ahead of it. It can be kind of time consuming and you really need to look through every single expiration date because you will be surprised what is in your pantry that you didn't know that's totally expired. This could be spices. Obviously it could be like pasta or dry goods that you think has a really long shelf life. Obviously any snacks that you may have. And also if you have any New, New Year's resolutions where you're like, hey, I'm trying to not eat gluten or I'm trying to not eat whatever. Now is a really good time to kind of pull those things out that you don't wanna eat and maybe donate them to a shelter or give them to a friend or a neighbor or whatever. I separated them by category. So I have all of my snacks right here. I have some of Sawyer's snacks right here, some breakfast foods. Down there I've got my pasta sauces and my pasta noodles. Um, the hearts of palm linguine is really good if you're trying to get away from noodles. And then all the broths and other sauces and spices and things like that, kind of have them sectioned down on the end. Get them all in their separate areas and then you move on to the next step after you've purged, you've organized by category, then you're going to get your bins. And you're gonna need a lot of bins, but I'm telling you right now, these bins go with you forever. They don't expire. So invest in bins. And I'm gonna link all the bins that I have here. I got them all on Amazon. I'm gonna link them down below. So if you guys are curious as to the styles or whatever, um, just check that description box and you can find it all there. Make sure you take all the stickers and all the labels off. It's a big part of this process. Your fingers won't be happy, but your eyeballs will. Okay, when it comes to bins, you want different sizes and different shapes, and here's why. Having something that's open on top that you can just reach your hand in and grab it is gonna be the easiest, best solution. Then you're gonna want things like this that have a really handy handle on the end of it, and that's because you can put like heavier things up higher. When you reach for it, you have a good grip, so if you've got a bunch of like chicken broth or things like that, having it in a bin keeps it from getting all pushed around and you end up losing sight of what you're actually looking for. This keeps it contained and it keeps it kind of in its spot. And then the last really great type of container are Lazy Susans, like this one. So this is a Lazy Susan. I don't know why we named her Lazy Susan, poor Susan. 
I think she's actually quite efficient. She's kind of the opposite of lazy. It's great because it has these little containers, so you could take this off if you wanted it to just be flat. Or, I like to put a lot of my um, condiments in here. This is great because you maximize your storage space and you also have great visibility, so you don't have like, like I was just telling Angela, I had like three things of mustard in my pantry because I didn't know that I had any mustard. I kept buying it because I'm like, oh, we're out of mustard because it's shorter and it was way in the back. Having something like this helps keep the things that are small that you can kind of pack in there all very visible. You can spin it, see all the different options. Nothing goes missing. This leads me to my next tip, which I conveniently named something that I forgot, so let me check. Create practical placement. So practical placement, think about when you go to put stuff away in your pantry. You've got it all organized, it's in its bin, where are you gonna put it? Things that you use all the time should be placed lower, easily accessible. Things that you use rarely or back stock, extra paper towels, things like that. Use less valuable real estate a little bit higher up on the shelf. So for example, let's look over here. This is my back stock. We're gonna put it way up where I normally can't reach. Oh gosh. All of Sawyer's stuff, obviously I wanna be able to reach it and grab it. When he is old enough to get stuff himself, I will probably swap this level of things down with that level of things. The vitamins, I really, we used to have them really high. I take vitamins all the time. I wanna have access to my vitamins, but I don't want it to be so low that Sawyer can get it. So that seems to be a really good shelf for that. My spices are really easily accessible. No one's gonna wonder where our sauces are because they're right there. We use sauce a lot. And then back stock for things like chicken stock or whatever, that's up pretty high. I can vis visually see here because these are clear, this is where I go if I want chicken broth. And if I really wanted to go next level, which I might later on, I could make a label with whatever's in this bin because you categorized it so it should all make sense to you. And you could put it right here on the bottom or on the handle or whatever you want to do. Make sure that you choose practical placement for these things. That way you actually use the stuff in your pantry. It's going to be different for everybody based on your needs and how many kids you have and all the different things that your family needs. But make sure you intentionally put it away so that way you use it and it works for you. All right, let's move over to the fridge. And we're basically going to do the same thing all over again and start by purging and taking everything out. So let's get to it. Okay, so I got it all out. I've gone through everything to make sure that everything I have in there is all uh, non-expired goods. Now I'm gonna use my containers. Remember, get your containers, containers are good. These are gonna slide into your fridge and they're actually gonna save you because anything that spills is gonna spill in the tray and not in your fridge. And I like these because they have little wheels on them and they have a place to grip. So you can just pull the tray out, push the tray back in, and you can actually adjust these dividers to work for you. So if you wanna have one big opening, you can. Three separate openings, big or small, you kinda of make it uh, work for you. Get your containers, adjust and kind of observe what you have, fit them in the containers, and then get them in the fridge. Okay, everything is back in. We have our containers that are all categorized. Uh, again, I could do labels on these, but for me, I already know what's what. I got my dog food, I got my open sauces, whether it's tomato sauce or salsa. I have my cheese, you know, keto cheese. I have two cheeses, actually. Love including the Lazy Susan inside, especially on a space like this. This guy works perfectly. I know exactly what's in there. I have a little spot for my wine, which is great. My Zevia drinks, this is my dairy tray, my yogurt, my heavy cream, um, another thing of cheese, and then my hard boiled eggs. Obviously down here, I've got all my veggies and all my fruits, my sauces, the baby food and butter, and my treats. And I'm good to go. Okay, there's one last thing that we need to cover, and that is the annoying to organize and to store items, like pots and pans, Tupperware, and the like. So let's get to it. Mm -hmm. 
tricky area. Number one, pots and pans. I have a feeling that your drawer looks something like this unless you're really organized and on it and if you are, you may not be watching this video because you already know what to do. So for the rest of us normal people, this is chaos in here and it's loud. Anytime I go to grab something, it like hurts my ears. Everything bangs into each other. So I am hopeful with this new thing I just found on Amazon. Well, I'm gonna show you that in a second. I'm gonna take everything out, transform it, and show you the after. Ready? Oh no, we're not gonna be able to match this up. <laughs> Ta-da! Scout, what do you think? Look, look, look how cool. You guys, this drawer makes me so happy. Like I can't even begin to tell you. I have every, all the little pot lids are all perfectly lined up. Now here's what you have to come and see. Zoom in a little bit so you can see this. This peg drawer allows for me to put these pegs in here and it keeps all of my pots and pans from moving around. They're gonna stay where they're supposed to. And then these lids, look at this. This was a little insert you can buy separately for these peg boards and then you can have little lid storage for your pots, which is amazing. So when I close this drawer, everything stays where it's supposed to. I will link this below and I'll give you a disclaimer. They are pre-cut and they'll tell you the dimensions. Mine was almost perfect. It was like a quarter of an inch too big. So Tyler has a wood saw thing in the back. He just cut a little quarter inch off and then it slipped right in. But there is a chance that it won't fit your drawer perfectly, so make sure you measure the inside of your drawers, and if you're okay with being able to cut it, if you have that kind of a tool, then it's gonna be the perfect solution for you. Go check it out, I will link it below. It's amazing. Now let's do the frying pans. Just as simple. Okay, so here's the before of my Tupperware drawer. Everything is a mess, very chaotic really need this new organization piece. And it's going in this drawer. So the lids are what make everything super messy. And so this awesome piece that I got on Amazon kind of divides it by size, keeps everything really contained and organized. And then I have all the different Tupperware sizes kind of stacked up over here. The trick is uh, training your husbands to put it back this way. I cook, my husband does the dishes, and then we tried off undoing the dishwasher and need to make sure that he puts it back like this because it looks so good. Okay, as you can see underneath my sink here, I've got some storage, but it really isn't working for me. And what I love about these new containers that I found on Amazon is they have wheels and they have this little contraption you can attach to the side if you want. You could attach to the back to expand the storage, but it's gonna give me tons of space to separate and organize the stuff that I have. And yes, I do have a lot of soap. Okay, now if you have little kids and you do not want them getting in to underneath the sink where all the chemicals are, this is your secret. So you need this little wand. I keep it up next to the soap, next on the sink. You hover it wherever you have the hook and it opens, say, see this little notch? When this goes on, it pushes it down. It's magnetic. Oh, and you can, I guess, turn it off too, which is cool. Or switch it on and you can't get it unless you have that guy. Pretty neat. I will link this below. Okay, what do you guys think? We finished the organization back here. If I need to pull this out, I can because it has wheels, which I love. Still have a spot for all of the dishwasher soap. I have all 72,000 of my <laughs> dish soaps in one side. Yes, I'm addicted to Myers. Working on it. And I have a little side compartment here for all of my little sponges. It's very organized, it's cleaned out. I think it's very functional. Okay, you guys, that's all I have for you today. I hope that this video was um, encouraging give you some great tips, practical tips that you can take and use. And I hope that you rewatch it and you get up and you go purge and clean and organize your kitchen. Cause I promise you it will feel so good when you're done. Everyone in your house will be appreciative. And I just really think it's a great way to like reset every year, go through everything, clean it out, get organized. 
Again, if you guys haven't subscribed, join the family, hit that subscribe button, and then also check out on Instagram. I have an Instagram, it's called at Shara Stevens, and it's called, that was a weird way to say it. Go on Instagram and at Shara Stevens and follow along. We do all kinds of fun things over there, whether it's more personal life, family life, and then also tons of tips on organizing and interior design. So I hope you guys had a great New Year's Eve. I hope you have a great start to the new year and come back for the rest of the series. We're gonna be tackling some other very fun projects uh, coming soon. All right guys, I will see you later. Bye bye.